Chief Personal Scientist Richard Sprague from Personal Science Inc. shares his methods for hacking your microbiome. Richard has taken it to the next level when it comes to his personal microbiome. Hi Richard, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you for, uh, for joining. Uh, the experiment that I did with, with microbiome was really great because it explained a lot about mm. my, uh, my diet. But uh, what you did is nothing compared to that because you, did, you, you quantify yourself uh, to the extreme almost and you're really inspiring. So uh, can, you, what, can you tell about personal science and, and why everybody should be more fascinated by, by a quantified self? Sure. Well, let me um, let me start by um, like uh, first of all explaining that I'm not a scientist. And if you want to show me the let, let's go to the next slide here, and I can show you. Um, I uh, my background is in consumer products, and um, you know I spent time at Microsoft and Apple and a couple other companies. But uh, for the last few years, I've been um, doing some entrepreneurial things related to this field we call quantified self, which is what can we learn about ourselves if we measure and carefully track um, you know the foods we eat and the things that we do, and um, as you said about the microbiome, I got a little carried away. I um, learned about this and I started testing myself daily um, more than 600 times. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, That's a lot. I'll uh, go into a little bit more detail about that in a minute. Uh -huh. But um, first, um, this slide here I want to show you. Um, this is something that was published in um, Nature Medicine a couple months ago. And it's just, a, a, just another example. I mean, there, just about every scientific paper you'll read looks like this. Uh, but this is, in particular, um, some scientists in the UK decided to uh, take a thousand people and measure how their blood sugar responds when they um, uh, eat the same food. Now, what gets reported in articles like this is that blue red line you see there in the middle. Um, that's the average. So somebody eats some food, and the average glucose that they get after one, two, three, four, et cetera hours is this amount. But look at all the variation. There's so much variation. You know, some people. Uh, respond, you know, very quickly. Some people respond slowly. There's no such thing as average. No, you're yeah. not average. You're you. Yeah. And um, there are many, many different factors for this uh, that are showed on the right, right side of the slide. But let me go to the next slide and explain what this kind of the implications meant for me. So um, next slide, please. Um, to me, when I look at this, uh, the fact that everyone is different, I, I. Um, it, it, uh, it, it inspires what um, I learned from my mentor, a University of California um, professor, who coined this term personal science. Now, personal science is the idea that of doing science for personal reasons rather than professional ones. And um, it's more about, like, what is a, can you develop an attitude about yourself where you live your personal life with a curiosity, skepticism, bias toward experimentation that a scientist does? Now, this is actually not something all that new. I mean, a lot mm -hmm. of the really great breakthroughs in, yeah. in uh, scientific history happened by people who were what I would call personal scientists. They were doing it as a hobby or as, um, yeah, yeah, not yeah. as definitely not something as a professional yeah, job. Like, like Darwin or, or Mendel. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, next slide, please. Now, um, uh, so I decided, when I saw that uh, Nature article, I decided, you know what, I can test myself. And uh, this is a very low cost, less than 100 US dollars uh, device that you can plug into your arm. I'm wearing one actually right now. Uh -huh. uh, that will measure your glucose levels, your blood sugar levels, um, hour, you know, minute by minute as you're eating some food. And um, go to the next slide and I'll show you a few things that I learned. So th that is, um, that's how it works. It's not really a needle. It doesn't hurt. It's just something you attach to your underarm. Next slide. And um, so one of the things I tried was I tried uh, taking some oatmeal. And that green line is what happens when I um, eat plain oatmeal without any, um, anything in it. And generally speaking, a large spike like this is bad for you. It, that means yeah, that you've had sure. you know, too much sugar is hitting your system at one time. Uh, but I experimented a couple of different ways, and I discovered that blue line there is when I have my oatmeal with some butter. It becomes vastly more healthy for me just by adding a little butter to the, to the yeah, oatmeal. Yeah, the, the difference is huge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, and um, I've done this on a zillion different kinds of experiments. So go to the next slide and I'll show you what happens with pasta. Now, a lot of people think that pasta is not good for you, um, partly because of that huge glucose uh, spike that you get out of it. Um, and that's indeed what I get when I um, have pasta with tomato sauce, which is that red line at the top. But um, look at that, the, I'm sorry, the, 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 green. the green line yeah. at the top, the, the one that goes up. The red line, though, 
is what happens when I have it with pesto. <laughs> So uh, one of the things that I discovered um, through my own self-experimentation is that if I'm going to have pasta, uh, generally speaking, I'll avoid the tomato sauce and I'll have uh, pesto instead. And these are this just some examples of things you can learn when you're um, thinking like yeah. a personal scientist. Great. Um, so uh, next slide. I'll, I'll go through the next couple slides you know, fairly quickly. Um, what is driving that glucose change? Well, it turns out that the microbiome is a huge part of that. Go ahead and show me the next slide and I'll... I think most people here already know a lot about the microbiome. Um, you, I'm certain, uh, you've certainly but, heard but that. But maybe um, it's, it's interesting to point out you have two examples here of banana and sprouted grain bread. And actually, you see the opposite behavior between the two. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So there are some people who um, uh, you know, respond completely different to something as simple as a banana. And so if you're reading a book someplace that says that bananas are good or bad for you, but you don't know exactly what it is for, you know, in your own particular mm -hmm. case, what do you know? Yeah. You really have to learn these things by yourself through self-experimentation. And um, go ahead, the next slide, and I'll show you. So um, I'm not going to go into this because I think most people here already know that uh, the, your, your body is full of tons and tons of DNA. More than 99% of the DNA is not actually human. But here are some things that maybe you don't know on this slide. Um, did you know that 80% of the serotonin and melatonin that you have in your body is in your gut? It's not in your brain. This is the stuff that yeah. supposedly affects sleep. What's it doing in your, in your gut? Another thing you might not know is that um, microbes are all over the food you eat. Um, you know, fairly innocent microbes, but you add it up at the end of the day, it's like taking a, one of those powerful probiotic pills. And you're getting microbes and microbial food from things that you might not expect, including things like coffee. Did you know that two cups of coffee has the same amount of soluble fiber as a half cup of lentils? <laughs> like, I didn't know this stuff. Um, and it's because we're our bodies are really optimized for the microbiome. And go ahead in the next slide. Now I'll show you, um, well, it turns out it's relatively easy to test yourself. And, and um, yes. here are just a, a sample of some products that are available in yeah. Europe and the United States that will, um, for a fairly low cost, let you test and see what your microbiome is. Um, I tested myself, as I said, more than 600 times. And here's one of the things I learned, uh, kombucha. Everybody thinks kombucha is good for you. Well, guess what? It doesn't really change my microbiome at all. Um, and uh, th those blue lines there, do you see that on the, on, the, on the scale there? Those are days when I was drinking, um, I think, three bottles a day of kombucha. And this is just showing if my gut diversity changed. And when you look at that, it's fairly random. It's just kind mm -hmm. of bouncing up and down. Yeah. And uh, similarly with probiotics, that red line there at the bottom is uh, a 10-day period when I was eating a very powerful um, high dose of some probiotics to improve the level of bifidobacterium, which is considered a, you know, a healthy microbe. Yeah. Um, I couldn't get anything out of it. But look at that other big spike at the left side of the diagram. That is when I was on a trip to New Orleans eating lots of red beans and rice. So one of the things I learned here is that um, the food you eat makes a big difference in the kind of microbiome you have. Go ahead, next slide. Um, here's one example of something that actually does work. Uh, the blue dots are days when I, um, the blue lines are days when I was drinking um, homemade kefir, and I you can very clearly see a huge increase in this uh, leuconostoc microbe, which is known to produce um, vitamin K, among other things, and is considered very healthy. I didn't have any of it until I started drinking kefir. And um, here's uh, the last couple that I will show you here is about travel. Um, this is a friend of mine. He sent his microbes, uh, microbial um, information to me. And that um, this is a heat diagram. It's a little difficult to explain, but um, essentially um, what he learned was that that left line there is when he was living in the U.K., but he moved to the United States, and immediately you saw a major change. You can see in that middle section there is a heat map showing lots of different microbes that appeared. And then he started taking a powerful antibiotic. The two on the right-hand side don't really um, – uh, it's not a significant change, but the, the change that happened when he went from Europe to the United States was a bigger change than when he started taking a probiotic. Oh. So travel has a big effect. And next slide, I, I tried this um, – testing myself daily on a trip to China, and I discovered exactly that, that um, a few new microbes showed up, this one called Coprobacter, uh, a couple other ones um, that only appeared when I'm traveling. Very strange. Uh, no, science doesn't know what those things do. We don't know if it's because of the international travel. It's something that I ate. We do know that um, based on my gut diversity here on the left-hand side, you know, a lot of things changed while I was there. So travel it has a big effect on things. Um, and, uh, let's go back to my, uh, yeah. So my, it, the, the, I guess the way that I'll conclude here is just to say that, um, 
I really encourage all of you to try to make science as personal as you can and start thinking like a scientist with that sort of open-minded, um, very uh, curious and skeptical way of looking at the world that scientists do. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.